All right, welcome everyone. It's nice to see so many seats uh, full out there with um, folks sitting in them. It's great to see. Um, so I will call the January 19th, 2022 uh, Border of Commissioners meeting um, to order. We are joined once again by our veteran Don Bradley, who's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and our county engineer, John Kleinitz, who's going to lead us in the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. You join me in a moment of invocation. Lord, we pause this morning in this time of governance to ask that you watch over us and guide us through these turbulent times, both high emotions, low temperatures, a pandemic. We find these times t challenging, but we know that this too shall pass. But we ask for your help because it is real and it's troubling. Help us all to focus on and appreciate what we have to be thankful for. Help us to meet every challenge and opportunity with a positive attitude. And help us to be missionaries in creating a better community for all of us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, we will move on to um, item number two on the agenda. I will make a motion to approve the minutes from the January 5th, 2022 Board of Commissioners meeting as submitted. I second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, we will open it up if there's any public comment here at the beginning of the meeting. Okay, seeing none, uh, we will move on to old business. And um, I will make a motion to approve the consent agenda items listed below. I will second that. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We'll move on to new business. I make a motion to approve a purchase between the County of York on behalf of Fleet Management <clears throat> and Lancaster Truck Bodies, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, for a galleon dump body for use by the York County Parks Department for a total cost of $61,615 under a PA CoStar's contract. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion, motion carries. I make a motion to approve the purchase between the County of York on behalf of Fleet Management and a Rivers Truck Center, Inc., Redline, Pennsylvania, for a 2023 Western Star 46X chassis for use by the York County Parks Department for a total cost of $130,965 under a PA CoStar's contract. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And number C, I'm going to make a motion to table this so we can gather more information. I'll second that motion. Um, I have a motion and a second to table this item. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion is tabled. I will make a motion to approve the purchase between the County of York on behalf of the York County Archives Office and Reynolds Business Systems, Erasmus, Pennsylvania, for a Book I-4 book scanner for a total cost of $52,044.50 under a PA CoStar's contract. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And item E, I'm going to make a motion to table this motion also to gather more information and review the contract. I'll second that. So I have a motion and a second to table this motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of tabling the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion is tabled. I make a motion to approve a contract between the County of York on behalf of the York County Coroner's Office and Health Network Laboratories, Allentown, Pennsylvania, to provide autopsy services to the York County Coroner's Office for 2022 
for a total cost of $545,000, and this total cost is an estimate based on the number of autopsies required. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I just, I did have one question for Michelle. I know there was um, maybe some discussions about um, putting a forensic pathologist in, a, in out there, so I just wonder if there's an out clause in this contract. Do you know? Okay. 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 But for the public's purposes, we have a morgue now. Yes. But we do not conduct autopsies here in York County. Yeah. It's something where certainly uh, the coroner has, is looking into, um, but at this point we are not conducting our own autopsies. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> I make a motion to approve a master services agreement and statement of work between the County of York on behalf of Information Technology Services Department and the Appalachia Technologies LLC in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania to provide an external vulnerability and NIST security assessment for a total cost of $26,400 under a PA CoStar's contract for the period of January 19th, 2022 through January 18th, 2025. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve a purchase between the County of York on behalf of the Information Technology Services Department and CDWG, Chicago, Illinois, for hardware and software maintenance for extra grid storage appliance from December 27, 2021 to December 26, 2024, with a total cost of $27,250 under a PA CoStar's contract. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve a contract between the County of York on behalf of the District Attorney's Office and the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and the amount of $20,500 to York College of Pennsylvania for research services and $19,990 to the program It's About Change for mentorship curriculum development for a total grant amount of $40,490 for the period of January 1st, 2022 to December 31st, 2022. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I make a motion to approve a contract agreement between the County of York on behalf of the District Attorney's Office and the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, in the amount of $30,750 for research services to York College of Pennsylvania for the period of January 1, 2021, December 20, 2022. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve the appointment of Claire E. Weigel III to the York County Parks Advisory Board to serve a three-year term effective January 1, 2022 to December 31, 2024. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item oh. I make a motion to approve the purchase of an agricultural conservation easement by the County of York, Pennsylvania acting through the York County Agricultural Land Preservation Board for 60.02 acres of farmland owned by Isaac F. and Lydia S. Esch of Lower Chancefort Township in the amount of $180,060. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I see Patty's here. You want to give us a little information about this farm? Um, 
was visited the farm and found to be over eighty percent for um, implementation. Uh, let's see here. Farm did rank eighteenth out of the fifty applications we received in twenty twenty. Um, additionally, the farm is coming in at one hundred eighty thousand sixty dollars for the easement purchase price. Um, and we will also, after settlement, submit a request to the state for incidental costs because the state reimburses us for processing, totaling four thousand ninety-seven dollars and forty-four cents. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Patty? <coughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Make a motion to certify the allocation of twenty twenty-two county funds in the amount of $2,007,222 for the purchase of agricultural conservation easements in York County on behalf of the York County Ag Land Preservation Board pursuant to the authority of Act of June 30, 1981, the Agricultural Area Security Law as amended. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mark, this is something that we do every year. Yes, it is. And this is the money that's provided through from the land preservation fund tax it's good okay. okay any further discussions hearing none thank you <laughs> <laughs> wait till we vote <laughs> um hearing none all those in favor signify by saying aye aye opposed motion carries <clears throat> i make a motion to approve a bid award between the county of york on behalf of the york county prison and Sotoris mechanicsburg pennsylvania the lowest responsible bidder for digital biometric fingerprint readers for secure law library access for a total cost of $7,165 for the period of January 24, 2022 to February 4th, 2022. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve a bid of war between the County of York on behalf of the York County Prison and the Spades Industrial Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania the lowest responsible bidder to remove and install a new hydraulic dock leveler in the amount of $11,642.58. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve a bid award between the County of York on behalf of the York County Prison and CDWG Inc., Shelton, Connecticut, the lowest responsible bidder for switch network essentials and licensing to utilize offices in the total cost of $7,559.84. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve a bid solicitation between the County of York on behalf of the York County Sheriff's Office and for one Voltai RX3D7 X-ray machine. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve a contract between the County of York on behalf of the York County Prison and the Keefe Commissary Network, LLC, St. Louis, Missouri, to provide food and other related commissary items and services to the inmates for the period of December 17, 2021, to December 17, 2026. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Just for the public, the prison board uh, thoroughly reviewed this and looked at our opportunities and decided this was the best move for us. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve an intergovernmental agreement between the County of York and Chancefer Township to facilitate the replacement of Bridge 308 over Otter Creek and Chancefer Township. This is the PennDOT Federal Highways Administration process required by the York County, York Area Metropolitan Planning Organization. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'll make a motion to approve a contract between the County of York and York County Economic Alliance and the Partnership for Economic Development in York County to distribute ARPA funds totaling $6,915,690 to small businesses and nonprofit organizations as part of the Yoko Strong Restart Grant Program. 
I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second, and I know our colleagues from the Economic Alliance are here if they want to share a few words. Now, I think you said this, but just to make sure for the people that apply and are waiting to hear, sure. we're transferring the money now. How soon will the checks go out? So the goal there is by, uh, by the second February. Okay. And then we will receive a final list of the yeah. recipients because the commissioner is not involved in the process. The Economic Alliance reviews them and makes those determinations, and we see the final list. I think um, given this, I know that um, when we did the restart version one, round <coughs> one with the CARES funding, and then the CHIRP uh, program, and now this, um, all of the eligible applicants um, were funded. So I think that that is a great thing. Uh, nobody that met the requirements was was turned away. So yeah. it's a positive thing. Three for three on that, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, three for three. So good. Good job. Yeah. Um, any questions for David? Okay, hearing none, um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve an allocation of up to $1 million from the American Rescue Plan funds for premium pay to the various York County departments experimenting significant difficulties with hiring and retention of staff at the York County Youth Development Center and the York County Children, Youth, and Families Department. Um, I think Commissioner Ho uh, Smith meant to say, I mean, Hope meant to say experiencing. Experiencing, experiencing. okay. <laughs> I'm getting reading here. Yeah. Um, so I'll second that motion. Um, any discussion? Um, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve Herbert Rowling and Grubick, Inc., 
proposal to provide engineering services, including survey, design, permitting, construction, bidding, right-of-way acquisition, and construction oversight services for Bridge 308, which carries Skype Road over Otter Creek and Chancellor Township in the amount of $246,000. This project will be funded with general funds. This motion is contingent upon the execution of the intermunicipal agreement between the County of York and Chancellor Township. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve a resolution 2022-01 authorizing the filing of a redevelopment capital redevelopment assistant capital program grant application by the Northern York County School District for athletic fields improvements listing the County of York as a grantee for the application. This resolution is subject to the execution of a subgrantee and cooperation agreement by Northern York County School District for the utilization of the RACP funds. The President Commissioner has granted the authority to execute any additional documents in furtherance of this grant. I'll second that motion. So I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve Resolution 2022-02, <coughs> authorizing the appointment of Michael J. Kearney, CEO Mullen and Lagerman, and Michael Pritchard, Planner, Department of Economic and Community Development, City of York, to the Housing and Community Development Loan Committee for terms beginning January 2022 through November 30, 2023, and November 30, 2022, respectively. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve a contract between the County of York on behalf of the York County Prison and the Pennsylvania Department, the Pennsylvania District Attorney's Institute, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, to provide a statewide automated victim information and notification system referred to as SAVIN at no cost to the county for the period of January 1, 2022, to December 31st, 2022. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve a contract between the County of York on behalf of the York County Weatherization Program and inexpensive HVAC solutions to provide contractor services on an as-needed basis for the York County Weatherization Program as outlined in the agreement for a term beginning January 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2025. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve a tax refund register 2021-16, authorizing payment of your county real estate tax refunds totaling $11,085.01. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve the check register for the week of January 12, 2022, totaling $5,139,760.63. I'll second that motion. <coughs> I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve the check register for the week of January 19th, 2022, totaling $17,370,199.81. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any Mark, that's a pretty big number. What's in this year's <laughs> yes. week's budget? Uh, <clears throat> there's a couple large uh, items in there. There's about a million dollars worth of health care claims that are being paid. Uh, we're transferring $1.7 million to the Domestic Relations Fund, uh, which is the county's match for the year. And the reason why we're doing that is the state uh, seemed to continually be late in their allocation of funds to the county, so we're, we're trying to cover the costs until the state reimburses us. And it also includes about $8.5 million worth of capitation payments for the Health Choices Program, which is the, the dollars that are allocated uh, for the individuals that are being served by the program. Okay, good. And I think maybe for the public, and we could do this in open discussion, but <clears throat> I just want to say that, you know, under your guidance and everything, 
when I was here previously, and I've been here for a long time now, we used to do tax anticipation notes in the beginning of the year to fund things like this because tax revenues don't co start coming in until, you know, April or May. And we have not done a tax anticipation note for a couple of years because of your good guidance. So I appreciate that because that saves money for the taxpayers. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. There were no executive sessions. I'm now going to ask our colleague, Felicia Dell, to come up and give us an update on the York County Strategic Plan. And I'm going to do my best to navigate the slides here. <laughs> well, no, you can click, but I need to pull them up. I can drive if you need me to. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Felicia, for some reason, the folks watching cannot hear you. So okay. can you make sure the mic's on? It's blue. OK. So those watching, just be patient while we get this fixed. Felicia, if that doesn't work, you can come up here and speak from one of these mics. Sounds like it's working. Oh boy. Check, check. Yep. Okay. Do you want me to start from the beginning or just okay. pick up? Hmm. Um, why don't you start from the beginning? Okay. All I right. thought you shared some good comments for folks. Okay. All right. Well, good morning. <laughs> Let's try this again. So let me just um, take people through a couple of experiences that you might have had when, as a resident of York County, you might have, you know, uh, visited a county park and taken a hike. Um, you might have aging parents and you need some services to help with caregiving. Um, you might be a developer that's going through the approval process and you have to do some erosion and sedimentation control measures on your development site. Uh, you might be a victim of crime and you're seeking justice. Um, you might be a farmer who's looking to preserve their property. Um, you might be a municipality that needs some infrastructure investment in your municipality. Maybe a bridge needs fixed. Maybe a roadway needs widened. You might be homeless and need some sort of shelter. And those are just a few of uh, examples of all of the different things that you could experience in our county. And in some way, shape, or form, if you've been through any of those experiences or any others, 
you might have been touched by county services. The array of county services is so broad um, and they cover so many different areas, but at the foundation of all of those services, there is a core of county staff people that are delivering those services, administering those programs, making sure those improvements get made. And also at the foundation of that, there is support, enabling leg legislation, funding, whatever it may be, provided by the county commissioners through our government. And while we have all of those programs and services with a common foundation, we've never really had a broad overarching um, direction, a common direction sent for that broad, set for that broad array of services that we have until now. So if you go to the next slide, what we've been working on over the last nine months, a pretty brisk pace, we've been working on creating from that solid foundation also a common direction that all of our county services and programs can move towards creating a brighter future for York County. And as we move towards that brighter future for York County through the services that we provide, we're also creating a brighter future for our community. So we undertook a strategic planning process that was looking not only on how can we create strategic planning within county government as an employer, but we also created a direction that we hope we see our county going in as well. If you go to the next slide. So you might be familiar with strategic planning as a business. Um, we've all kind of been through that in some shape or form. But it's also a good idea to have a strategic plan for our community. Um, a lot of times, government is segmented in a way that people see it as this silo. But really, there's a lot of different ways that government collaborates and helps create that long-term vision for our community as, as this, through the services that we provide. And it's important that not only as, a, as an employer, but also as a community, that we get feedback on what those actions are that the public would like to see, and we bring them into the work that we do here at county government and prioritize them where, they're appropriately, uh, where they appropriately fit. Also, it's important that we challenge ourselves to work not just within our silos, but that we collaborate across public and private sector and get that citizen input um, to help guide us in those prioritized actions. So it's not just something that we've done for county government as an employer, but we're hoping that this will bleed out and also set this direction for our community for all of these different reasons that are on this slide. Go on to the next one. There were key steps along the way. Um, there was a, a cultural index assessment, which is a fancy term for an employee survey, and we had a really great turnout. Uh, for all of the employees that participated in the cultural index assessment and a lot of that feedback helped guide a lot of the other steps that you see on here. There were some important statements that were developed, there were some guiding principles and strategic anchors identified, and all of that was tidally summarized in a one-page document, so it's not some large document that we're going to have to pull off and page through from time to time. It's a really concise one-page summary that hopefully we'll be using on a regular basis to guide all of the actions that we hope to take from that. On to the next slide. So there's important statements that I mentioned that we developed. A lot of these statements, your, your purpose, your mission, your vision, and your core values were really shaped by input that we received from the cultural index assessment as well as input from a coordinating committee that was made up of a number of different representatives across the whole um, spectrum of county government. They met pretty diligently. I think for a while there, we were meeting once a week to get this work done. And out of that, we came up with some really broad statements that we think provides direction. And what we're hoping is that every county employee, regardless of what department you're in, can see how they fit within the purpose, the mission, the vision, and that they practice the core values. So the purpose, why we come to work every day, regardless of what department you're in, we're, we strengthen the quality of life in our community. What we do as we work individually on strengthening that, that quality of life, collectively we start to build a better York County. And over time, as we're building a better York County, we're getting to that long-term vision of inspiring opportunity for a unified community. 
And we wanted to get this work done, our purpose, our mission, and our vision, by practicing the core values of being dedicated to our work, inclusive in how we do our work, and also transparent about how we do our work. Go on to the next slide. In addition to those broad statements, we also worked very hard on developing what we came up with as guiding principles. And I think it's important to know that the guiding principles that you see on this slide and the next are not canned guiding principles that we got from some website about how to be good employees and good managers. These were actually developed from the input from the cultural index assessment and talking about them and hashing them out with the coordinating committee. So these are unique to the desires and the interests of York County employees. It's also important to know that when we're talking about guiding principles, um, they are the principles about how we'd like to conduct ourselves in the workplace with our colleagues, but also how we'd like to conduct ourselves when we're interacting with the public. And one final point on guiding principles, they are very affirmative statements. You know, we, are, we encourage honest dialogue. We are united. We're innovative. We're resilient. They are statements that say what we are. We might not be there yet, but they're stating that's what we want to be like. So it sets a marker in the future of how we want to work towards being. Um, hopefully we're there, but if not, it at least gives us that clear direction of what we want to do, how we want to become in the future. Um, the other thing that we established are what are the core anchors around which we should focus our efforts. So I'm going to go clockwise, starting with fiscal responsibility. Of course, as stewards of public dollars, we all want to be fiscally responsible. So fiscal responsibility was clearly an anchor that we have to be focusing on all of the time. Programs and services, that's really one of the main things that county government is about. There's a whole array of programs and services that we're either mandated to provide or that we do because we think it's a need in our community or we've heard from the public that this is a need. So there's a whole array of programs and services that are also a strategic anchor of who we are in county government. We have to have a place to operate and an infrastructure from which to, to deliver services, house our staff, so operations and infrastructure is a strategic anchor. Outreach, education, and engagement. If people don't know about the great things that county government does, um, we're not going to be successful in improving, building a better York County, improving our community. So doing outreach, education, and engagement is another strategic anchor. And of course, at the center of all of this, are the people that do this work on a daily basis in a dedicated, inclusive, and transparent way. So as we move forward with our strategic anchors, um, those are the five that we want to focus on. And congratulations to the county commissioners for having a strategic plan at this point in time. The plan is completed, but it's time to pivot to action. So over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be creating and finalizing an engagement committee that's going to be working with county commissioners, other leaders in county government, employees, to help develop the short and long-term tasks around those five strategic anchors that are going to get us to a brighter future for York County. So thank you, county commissioners, for your support throughout the process. Thanks to the coordinating committee members and the department directors that participated in the meetings. Um, I think we've got a great plan to lead us into the future. Thanks, Felicia. Um, I just want to echo a couple comments that Felicia made. Um, she made the comment that these weren't canned statements that uh, we came up with, and they weren't. They were a lot of people who spent a lot of time, a lot of healthy dialogue um, around what they should be. And um, I know I uh, speak uh, for Commissioner Hoke as well. You know, really proud of the team being so thoughtful and purposeful in the language that they wanted to use to set the course for your county government. Um, I also uh, want to make sure that we acknowledge Felicia and her team in the Planning Commission. Um, they were the project managers uh, for us, and it was great uh, to partner with them. Uh, they never said no. They, they uh, just kept wanting to move us forward in a positive direct direction. So thanks to Felicia and the Planning Commission. I also, if our colleagues at Joaquim 
are watching. That was an outside firm that we contracted with. I want to thank them. They challenged us to think differently and think broadly about how we can serve the 450,000 people that live in the 911 square miles of York County. And then I, I want to pause and also, um, Felicia did touch on this, um, the cultural index assessment, the employee survey. We had hundreds of county employees that took the time to do the survey. And we just want to, again, acknowledge um, their participation in the survey. Um, and we really do value their opinions. And their input helped craft the things that you saw Felicia uh, put up there today. And lastly, the coordinating committee. I won't list all the people that were involved with it for the sake of time. Uh, but there were a lot of people cross-functionally um, in York County government that participated on a very regular basis, uh, meaning that they probably had to work some extra late hours in order to participate in this. And I just want to pause and make sure we thank them and recognize them for their um, contributions. But we're on a journey. This is just beginning. And I'm just really um, excited um, to be on this journey. Great. So. Thanks for the support. It's inspiring that we have a roadmap. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, um, now let me get out of this. And we have two proclamations um, that we're going to read, and um, I think I'm up on the first one. So, whoops. Did you want me to make that correction? Oh, yeah, so while I'm pointing this up, Michelle has a correction to make, so let me. So, earlier in the agenda, uh, Commissioner Wheeler requested whether or not the County of your contract with the coroner's office and health network laboratories had an out clause, and I was able to check. We do have a 90-day termination for convenience. So should we be able to do autopsies in-house, uh, we would certainly be able to uh, terminate that contract. Okay, thanks. Um, so we have two proclamations. <coughs> uh, for the folks watching, um, Commissioner Hoke and I are each going to read a proclamation, and then we're going to have an opportunity for a few folks to speak. Um, once we adjourn this meeting, we're going to pause before we go into salary board so we can take uh, a couple photos. Uh, so just to lay some groundwork there. So the first one, uh, proclamation, um, is uh, recognizing school choice week in York County. So whereas all children in York County should have access to the highest quality education possible, York County recognizes the important role an effective education plays in preparing all students to be successful exalt adults. And quality education is critically important to the economic vitality of York County. And York County has many high quality teaching schools in all types of school settings who are committed to educating our children. Okay. Um, in 2021, more than 300 mayors and county leaders, along with 27 governors and the entire U.S. Senate, issued proclamations recognizing National School Choice Week. And whereas National School Choice Week is a nonprofit, nonpolitical, and nonpartisan initiative and does not advocate for or against any legislation, and whereas the goal of National School Choice Week is to raise awareness among parents of the public and private K-12 education options for their children. Now, therefore, we, the commissioners of York County, Pennsylvania, do hereby recognize January 23rd through 29th, 2022, as York County School Choice Week, and call this observance to the attention of all of our citizens. I know we have some friends here from Logos Academy. Um, I think they were going to share a few words about school choice. Uh, no. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Julie. Sure. Really appreciate the time. Um, I'm Paige. This is Brian and Lauren, and we're from Logos Academy. We're a private K through 12 school right down here, like literally a couple blocks <laughs> over. And um, we just want you to know that we really want you to help us fight this fight of school choice. It shouldn't matter what zip code that you live in um, to be able to get a good education. Um, it shouldn't matter like the values, how you feel that your child wants to be educated. Every child's different, so I feel like that we should have that. Everyone should have that choice to be able to choose. So we're asking you to support us. Thanks. Anything else, guys? Good. 
Okay. Thanks. All right. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. So let me switch gears and then uh, Commissioner. Oh, yeah, stay with him. You can. Mm -hmm. So we are really um, honored today. We have a very, not that our friends at Logos aren't special. They're very special. But we do have a very special young man who is joining us today. His name is Kervin Coxon. And I'm going to let Commissioner Hoke read the proclamation. And I believe we're going to have some comments <laughs> from Claire Dahl, our um, Human Services Director. Hey, Kervin, do you want to stand up here? And I'll put my mask on and beside me. And I don't know if Claire and Tanya want to come up. <clears throat> Good. I'm happy to read this proclamation for Kervin Coxon, community hero, making a difference. Whereas Kervin... Coughlin is 11 years old and a resident of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Kervin has taken on the mission of helping children entering the foster care system. He has brought awareness to the fact that when children must be moved from their caregivers for safety reasons, there is limited time for them to collect their belongings and that the children often do not have a suitcase, duffel bag, or book bag to hold their items. Kervin has engaged the community through social media and his church, Christ American Baptist Church, located in Spring Grove, to raise awareness and collect book bags, duffel bags, and suitcases to donate to children entering the foster care system to hold their belongings, making their transition a little bit easier. For the past two years, Kervin has collected and donated approximately 200 book bags duffel bags, and suitcases to date. Each donation includes a personal note and a pair of funky socks to let the child know they are not alone. Kerwin has demonstrated that utmost compassion for others to his faith in God and turned that compassion into action. Now, therefore, we, the commissioners of York County, Pennsylvania, would like to recognize Kervin Coxon for his altruistic acts to help children entering the foster care system in the York County community. Given this day in York, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, on the 19th day of January, in the year of our, the year of our Lord, 2022, and it's signed by the York County Board of Commissioners. So congratulations for the job well done. <laughs> you want to say a few words? <laughs> I just want to take just a, a couple moments here to, you know, just thank you for your compassion, your kindness to others, other kids that you do not know. Uh, it is a, uh, a window into the strength of your character, you know, what you're doing. And also want to thank your family because I, I know they're a big part of this too in supporting you through this journey. So we really appreciate it. Um, wish we had more people in the world like you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. What a great role model for all of us. So I will um, open the meeting up for um, any public comment. OK. Um, Sure. Pat McCandless, quick reminder, the York County Ag Preserve Board has an easement application deadline coming up February the 15th. We would love to see you uh, send in your farmland preservation applications. Thank you. Um, and then... Um, and I have one a little public uh, service announcement. Um, I know it's hard to believe, but it's getting to be election time again. Um, the primary election is fast approaching. It's May 17th. Um, and the general election uh, is November 8th. So we wanted to remind everyone, um, this is a little visual. You will be getting, if you are one of the individuals who signed up to be on the permanent um, vote by mail, and or absentee um, type of voting, um, Act 77, uh, this is legislative, 
all of the counties across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania will be sending a letter that looks very similar to this to anyone who has identified themselves as somebody who wanted to be on the permanent voter list. So this is what the letter looks like. Um, they'll be going out um, the beginning of February, but we wanted to, again, give some folks some advance notice. We know there's been confusion um, over the past couple years regarding Act 77 and this permanent uh, mail-in list. So you'll be getting a letter. Um, Two options on the letter. One, there's a QR code that you can scan, and for folks who are familiar with QR codes, I think you know what um, happens regarding that. There's also um, on the back, um, if you would like to vote by mail, um, there's an application that you can send in. Um, just to remind everyone, this is an annual process. It has to be done every year. So even though you requested a mail-in ballot last year, you will have to request that again. Um, and this isn't something that's driven by the York County Board of Elections. This is driven by Act 77 legislation. And every county board of elections across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania um, will have to do this. So we encourage you um, to, if you want to vote by mail, Please fill that out and get that back into us as quickly as you can. Just to remind everyone, um, the deadline to request a mail-in and or absentee ballot for the primary is May 10th, and for the general election, that will be November 1st. Um, we do have uh, some frequently asked questions posted on our election website if you have any additional questions as a follow-up um, to this. So just wanted to remind everyone that you'll be seeing this um, come in the mail. So with that, if I could have a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of adjourning signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Uh, for the folks watching, we're just going to pause for a few minutes to take some photos with Kervin and our friends from the Logos Academy, and then we'll be back up uh, with the salary board. Okay. So thanks, everyone, uh, for hanging in there. We will um, we'll move on to salary board. So if I could have a motion to approve the minutes from the January 5th salary board meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes from the January 5th, 2022 salary board meeting as submitted. I'll second. second. <laughs> Great. So I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to approve the positions, salaries, hours of work, and fringe benefits as provided by existing collective bargaining agreements or as set forth in your county employee handbook or your county policy manual for the following departments and row office as stated below with no additional benefits or concessions as otherwise noted and there is listed in the agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. If I can I have a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of adjourning signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned and... On to retirement board. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting held on December 15th, 2021 as submitted. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to include <coughs> the following vested individuals on the monthly annuity payment list as listed below. Jeffrey Barber, CRU, Kathy S. Eichelberger, Children and Youth, Mary Ann Nagel, Conservation District. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion to include the following individuals on the monthly annuity payment list as listed below. Sally Bickle, Sheriff. Paul Fleck, Prison. Robert Huff Huffiger, Prison. John I. Prigo, MHIDD. Kathy Wise, Penn State Co-op. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Lee. <laughs> you cleared them out. <laughs> they went running. <laughs> Thank you. This say the third quarter on there. I actually have, Come on. as of last night, almost all the fourth. Fourth, yeah. Okay, oh, okay so good. Okay. So I, I do have it on there. I don't see it. Oh, yeah, so uh, I'll take it. So there'll just be two files on there.
One is the database report. Is that one? <coughs> Which book are we going through first? Uh, I don't know. He didn't say. I would imagine. I would say probably the, the second one. Okay. This one? Yeah, and it'll be, sorry, that'll be the white one. The white one? Okay. okay. Lisa, which presentation do you want first? Yes, there's That one? Wonderful. You can go all the way to page um, seven. You're going, to, you're going to go through all the pages. The early pages are just background on what other county funds work. You guys know all that. At this point, um, if you drag down to the chart at the bottom of page um, seven. This says page seven. You mean page eight? Oh, sorry. I'm on about the pages, of the numbers on the bottom. <laughs> um, so it'll be two more pages after that. The next page, ABC, and here we go at the bottom. So, so the first, sorry, I'm going to talk in here. Okay, so you know every year we reach out to all the counties. This is like year 14. <laughs> now we've been doing this free of charge for the counties uh, where we go out, we pull all the information together for all of them and put it in a database. We did it originally as a way where we, you know, we got, often got asked at CCAP and PSAC and the Treasurer's organisations. They always ask, you know, what are others doing? So what are the best practices? And this has really been a great help to counties over the years, not, not just our clients, most counties. And, and you'll see when we look at trends, a lot of them have been following kind of what you guys have been doing over the past few years. Now you start to see the trends occurring. The first one's the assume rate of return. You know, we've had some stellar years. You're going to see that in a minute, <laughs> courtesy of the Fed stimulus. Uh, you've had great, great returns. But when you have a pension fund, I think the thing that, that your board has always done well um, it is it's no good looking in the rear mirror. You've got to look what potentially coming down the pike. And, you know, over the past couple of years, you, you've been realizing, wow, we've been given great returns, future returns, <laughs> we expect to be lower. And you started to dial that down in line with your, your actuaries' um, thoughts as well. And you're actually one of the, the three most conservative funds now from a, a, a assume rate of return point of view. So as you lower your assume rate of return, that does take your liability up when you look at your asset liability. But what it means is you don't have to take as much risk from your investments. When you take risk, you know, it's great on the upside, but it kills you on the downside. And the good thing here, as I said, you know, a few years ago you were at seven and a half like everybody else, but you've been prudently just dropping that down to be more conservative as your fund has improved. And as you're going to see in a minute, it's not really impacting your funded status because your assets have done very well. If you jump uh, just a couple of pages for me to, to, to page nine. Uh, uh, here on the mortality assumption, again, you're the most conservative now. Not everybody's going to that public fund one. Remember last year I said, you know, you're living longer, <laughs> especially pub public employees. So uh, the costs go up because you're going to get paid out more uh, in the future. But, but it's, again, good to see here you're in the most conservative um, assumption bucket there. And more and more folks are moving that way. But when you say, I I'm confused on this, chart when you say we're the most conservative for the mortality assumption yeah so we have a, a an age that we use that other counties don't yeah yeah I mean, I mean so here you see there's three examples of what mortality tables folks are using now what conferry are, are, are saying and boomer shine now to to the that public funds should use this public fund 2010 uh <coughs> mortality table now, why is it more conservative? It's because the expectation is you'll live longer, so it makes your liability go up, Doug, which means your funded ratio will be a little worse. Okay. Okay, at that same asset level. Okay. But it's more conservative from a funding point of view. If you look at, 
ahead in 10 years, you would have ex expect your fund to be far better funded than one that would be using less conservative assumptions. And if you look at it, that's what the majority of the counties are using at this point. Right. Okay. And, it's, yeah. and, it, and we're moving closer to reality. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. That's so okay. we're planning for what is actually in the future, <laughs> not what we thought was in the future 20 or 50 years but ago. But when I look at this, I'm trying to figure out when it says RP 2000 table and then SOA public 210, the brown line, I'm not sure if I understand. We're in the brown line. We're, We're in the brown line. Yeah, okay. so anywhere it's orange, <laughs> that's what you're doing. So okay. you and 39 other counties are all in that. Okay, so that 39 point. counties, okay. Yeah, we're all I, using it. Now, last year, that was half of that. So okay. you were already doing that. Now, now everybody else has started to do that. Um, if you go to uh, the next, next page, just on colas, no one's really been awarding colas. We did have that in 2017 when the look-back provisions were taken out. We did see a jump that one year, but it's been pretty steady since. Um, as you know, you have to revisit it one, every three years. Um, obviously, at this moment in time, it's not a great time to be making a cola because it's obviously linked to inflation. Um, but, but I don't believe that's anything you need to make a decision on uh, at this moment, which is so. A good thing. So at the top of that, the the blue is like how six many, or, many awards? Six or seven year. counties did it. Did it last year? You got okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The next page is just a smoothing page, um, smoothing of assets. Again, yeah, the chart's good here. <clears throat> Remember, five years ago, the W method, which just think of that as that is the actuarial science norm for smoothing assets over five years. 20% of the gain and loss every year is applied to the asset value. Uh, remember a few years ago, a lot of counties did Act 44, and, and um, now there's only one county left doing that. I'm shaking my head. It bemuses me to still see a county doing that 11 years after. <laughs> um, um, you know, the financial crisis, uh, hopefully next year, everybody will be just doing the, the, the normalized smoothing. Uh, just two pages ahead, just quickly on returns. You're going to see with the returns on the, uh, uh, just down at the bottom there. So you can see five year, you've been around medium up about 10 compared to most counties. However, you're more conservative, but longer term, um, if you go down a bit, 10 year, you can see you're, up, you're, you're above, above medians there. Again, it's well, when we get onto this report, you get a better feel for <coughs> returns and risk. This doesn't factor in risk or asset allocation. It's just what, what a county's done. So it's not a great apples to apples, but it gives you an idea of the disparity of, of, of returns. Um, if you jump, just a couple more pages now. If you jump three pages, four pages, sorry, to the uh, adjusted fund ratio, it'll be on 19 on the PDF. Okay. Yep, yeah, this is the one, I think. Yep, yeah, there we go. Great, perfect. So, so this is the good one. Every year when you get your, your actuarial report, it'll have your funded ratio. And yours came in, I think, last year, high 80s or something, within your actuarial report. However, that, you know, somebody else could come in and say, well, we're about 100% funded now. Well, you could be 100% funded if you used assumptions that were a little less conservative and more in line with what others would be, it would, show, it would show you that. So what we do is just normalize it. So okay, if everybody's, uh, everybody's awarding 4.5% salary increase, everybody's got a 7.5% assumed rate of return. Therefore, it's a real apples to apples comparison. And here you can see, you know, you're almost 100% funded as of last year. When we factor in this next year, the results, because you've done about 15% last year as well, which is well above your assumed rate of return. Um, I expect you'll probably nudge above that 100% next year from this. On the report Boomershine does, where they go a lot more conservative on the assumptions, it might have you just under 100, you know, but in the 90s. Uh, but again, that's really strongly funded. So uh, compared to a lot of folks within a lot of municipalities in the state, and particularly within the country, extremely well funded uh, at this point, which is good. Yeah, I know we acknowledged Mark before, but I think it's important to do it again. I think the work that Mark's done, as well as some others sitting oh, up absolutely. here, yeah. um, to ensure that we are well funded, because yeah. it is no small undertaking. No, no, it's a huge undertaking. It's a, it's, it's a huge cost. It's a big line item each year, that ADC. Uh, and uh, fortunately, if people live longer, 
you have more and more retirees. In fact, the last page is about, if you go on about four or five pages, if you just look at the active versus retirees, uh, which um, coming up the next page there. So here you see a trend with the counties, a lot of the counties now, as these funds are becoming mature, you know, these, are, these funds are now 50, year old, 50 years old. So, you know, you remember the first few years there was no retirees, it's just money going in. Well, now there's a lot of retirees coming out and because your you funding is so much better, it's keeping the lid on the growth of your, your contribution, your ARC, your ADC. But the benefits continue to go up and up and up because you keep getting more retirees each year. So as these plans become more mature, you go into a, like a negative cash flow. Now, you still do have slightly more inactive participants relative to retirees, but there's some funds out there, as you can see, there's double the number of retirees and they've got people putting money into the fund at this point. And if they're not well funded, there's a world of hurt coming along for those types of funds. And there's a couple of counties, unfortunately, they never put any money in for years that are actually below 50% funded. And, um, you know, I don't know how they get out that hole at this point. So anyway, the good news, I think, you know, compared to most, you guys have been a kind of leading light anyway that a lot of folks follow. Um, you know, you're a bigger county. You have the wherewithal to do a little bit more. Um, but my question is, and to Mark probably is, <clears throat> we're heading in the right direction. We're going to 100% fully funded, but we still contribute a lot with our contribution every year. Do you expect in the next five to ten years that contribution will go down or because of the retirements growing in number that it'll stay about the same or have to increase? I think it'll probably stay about the same. We, we are seeing it come down slightly, um, and part of that's due to all the changes that we've made to the plan, and, and the returns have definitely helped. Yeah. Okay. If you were still using assumptions that you were using five years ago, then your, your contribution may be dropping a little bit. But, but to tr um, Treasurer Mabert's point, you're looking ahead and being reactive and, and, and being a little more conservative with those. So um, it means a little bit more cost now, but you're not kicking it can down the road for later, right. which those counties that are under 50% funded unfortunately have that issue. So, so it's just a good way of running the fund. That was, that was the whole purpose this past year in having the actuary take a look at what our assumptions are versus what reality is and what, you know, our specific fund has been incurring right. in terms of deaths, in terms of wage increases and rates of return. Yeah, and change in mortality, too. Right. 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 Yeah, but, but, I mean, there's... there's the, the keys in the term is called a defined benefit plan. There's a cost to it. Um, you know, when somebody comes and works for you, you've got your, you know, your costs, employment cost currently, salary, etc., and then you've got your post employment that you're actually paying for now. So. But by keeping us well funded, since we've had three years in a row where we've done very well, there's a compounding effect to yep. that return uh, that you wouldn't experience if you were. Not underwater, as well funded. Underwater, yeah. Yeah. It's actually a good good segue into the other report. If you wanted to open the other one, we'll and we'll just wrap up on, on that. As you're pulling that up, I will will let you know this what I'm gonna show you now, I think it you know, it's very early in the quarter, so you don't have the fourth quarter report. In fact, some of your managers' numbers are not in yet for the, the private stuff. But a lot of it's in. Um, and uh, I did I did let your actuary know as well what the asset values were. And he did confirm, yeah, you, you will be, using their conservative assumptions, you will be definitely above 90 uh, going into this year, which is great. And sometimes you don't want to get too overfunded because that's when you get knocks on the door. Uh, or let's increase this, ben, benefit, I'll do things like that. And it's always at the wrong time. It's always at, after the end of a good cycle, but then you get mean reversion like we're seeing this year. And markets are going down a lot. Um, so... Just take, a, we'll look at four, maybe three pages on the market environment. Um, so, do yep, perfect. That fits the page great. Is that okay? Perfect. Is that good? No, is that okay for you? Yeah, that's perfect okay. for me. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, 
Just quickly on the economy uh, for the fourth quarter, as you can see, GDP did, did um, rise again. It's expected to be around about 6%. Um, it's really on the back of good, good consumer spending around the holidays. And, uh, and, but more, more importantly, a, a big jump in inventory um, build out uh, by businesses as they're preparing for, for, glo for opening again around the world. Um, and that's expected to continue as, you know, through the rest of 22 here and be the big, biggest driver to uh, GDP growth. A um, bit of a headwind to that, though, um, has been the fact that, you know, we're still dealing with these supply chain issues. In fact, we did get some improvement in the latter half of the year, but it's starting to, um, within the transportation sector, it's starting to be an issue again. And um, not only that, within China and their stronger kind of COVID protocols and quarantine and that. A lot of ports are still closed and it's taking forever to get goods from there. And with Omicron coming in, that's kind of delayed it even further. So we do expect that, um, you know, some headwinds to the economy. It's, it's just going to be the supply chain issue and, and Omicron is just going to push things back a couple of quarters. And, um, you know, that's obviously going to continue the lead and keep inflation high going forward. Uh, we do expect it to peak somewhere in the early part of this year. But as I've been saying for the past year or so, we don't expect this to go up and come down quickly. We expect it to be higher for a, for a while um, since good news is you just got your, your, your infrastructure called your largest part with IFM. And as you see, even in, the, uh, in your OPEB here in a minute, the one month you added infrastructure on your OPEB was up nearly 7%, whereas bonds where you sourced it from were negative. So, I mean, it's... You can see it within the markets that everyone's trying to get inflation-sensitive assets right now. Um, if you go to the next page, um, just the one other thing that's really impacting um, inflation going forward is just labor costs, wage growth. Um, it's, been, it's been tremendous. And this is the part that is sticky inflation, not transitory, because once you start giving up, you know, increasing wages, et cetera, you can't take them back when inflation goes down at a later stage. Couple that with home prices have gone up a lot. A lot of that is really second, third, fourth homes that people are buying and then renting out. And the, the fallout from that is just rents are going up across the board as well. And that's less sticky from an infl and that's more sticky from an inflation point of view. So they're the reasons why we think you're gonna see inflation elevated for, for a little while yet. Um, what has been the outcome of that is really the key at the bottom and is what is impact, impacting markets now is the Fed does expect, you know, they want to keep a lid on this uh, inflation. So they do expect to, um, as you know, that in March they're halting all their um, quantitative easing and bond buying each month. And, and on top of that, they expect to raise rates three times this year. So what has been the impact of that in the markets you've seen? particularly in the tech, the tech market has really took it on the chin this year, down about 8% over the past 10 days. Um, fortunately, you're underweight those types areas now, and um, that will help going forward. Uh, just two more pages. Just last one on the global, global markets next on uh, page six here. In the developed world, you're seeing the same thing uh, with um, quantitative easing coming off and actually talking about tightening up uh, policy and increasing rates uh, in 2022. The one exception is China. Um, China took it on the chin last year with their real estate issues with Evergrande and, and their tech regs. Uh, really did cause a headwind of performance for emerging markets. They did lag a lot last year. Uh, they do have far tougher COVID policies uh, as that I touched on earlier. Um, but their expectation here is they're going to put on a lot of stimulus this year. So we do expect within China you might see a big bounce back in equity prices, just like we saw here in 2020 when, when we put a lot of stimulus on in the markets. So just something to be prepared about. Last page for you, page seven. Okay, what did returns do? As you can see there, U.S. stocks led, led the way again, up nearly 10% for the quarter and 25% for the year. You can see handily outperforming international stocks there and emerging markets, which were negative last year, 
and that was on the back of China. China's about 35% of the emerging markets index. Um, even with US dollar strength up over 7%, you can see even in local terms, US stocks did outperform quite handily uh, foreign stocks. The bond market, down 1.5% last year with your bonds. You know, we we're talking about that, to expect that. It's no surprise to see that. We don't expect that to be better anytime soon because rates are starting to go up. Obviously, when rates go up, prices come down. So it's not a great environment for fixed income. What has worked well in fixed income, as you can see there, high yield, bank loans, those type of investments have done very well for you uh, in this very low yielding environment. And then just to finish up, the inflation sensitive, no surprise to see tips at two point, sorry, I was on the bottom of the um, last page. T uh, tips quite a bit handily outperform uh, core bonds, they were up 2.4, core bonds were flat. And uh, you can see REITs really strong return again for the quarter up 16%, up over 40% for the year real estate. And you're going to see shortly you've had some good markups in your private real estate. And your private real estate's done over 20% a year. And it, what was it, a year ago, half a year, 18 months ago, everyone was saying, oh, it's the end of real estate. Get out of real estate. What do we know? <laughs> it, it, it's been a real good, and, and that's on the back of the inflationary bucket. And as you're going to see here now, if we go to performance, which will be on the next tab in your book, tab two, page um, six. Page um, 16 as your number in it, page number. So you can drop a few pages. And I'll just hit the major highlights on these, but um, here we go. So you ended the year at over $540 million. Uh, that is minus your timber, your infrastructure, private equity, private credit. They've still got to come in. That takes them about five weeks to get their fully audited statement. So you should be north of that. Um, but you did have a great return, even without factoring those for the quarter. You're up 5% handily outperforming your policy index. A lot of things really went well for you. Even though growth outperformed value within your domestic equities, the defensive names really started to do well for you, like the twin type products now. And um, that's why you still outperformed in domestic equities. Defensive equity, real estate, high yield have all, have all been very good. And then the one thing that's been a bit of a headwind, your managers outperform handily the emerging markets. But the emerging markets has been a drag there for you past year. Great return for the year, up nearly 15%. You maybe get a little over 15 when you factor in the privates when they come in. Um, as you can see, you blew away your policy index uh, uh, last year as we see this kind of pivot back to fundamentals mattering again. Um, what's it going to mean from a funding point of view? If you take in a factor of 15% return in 21, you had 11.5% return the year before that, a 19% return the year before that. I mean, it's been, been one, one hell of a run. Um, you were in 2018, you're down 4%. Um, 2017, now up 16 half. 2016, up just under 7, around about your assume rate of return. Now, in the study you're going to have this year for actuarial report, that 2016 drops off and is going to be replaced by a 15% type return. So you can imagine why this is going to lift your, your overall strength of your fund and your funded ratio. And you've done it all with lower vol, downside capture, and you've had a lot of activity. I know you only see us quarterly. You see a snapshot where the fund is now. I know you do get the weekly, so you can see. But there is an awful lot of work that goes on behind the scenes with, with the sub-investment group here. And with the controller's office, a lot of documentation always to stay on top of. There's fiduciaries on the fund. And as you can see, this year, been very active in changing real estate managers, which has been accretive, adding the, uh, the infrastructure, adding the private credit. And then we've recently made some changes to the global equity fund and added a new short-term bond fund to complement what M-Stone is, is doing. So a lot of work there, uh, and then looking forward this year, we will be adding an international small cap manager because as you come out of a recession, the small caps tend to do well. You have it on the 
uh, US side, we don't so much on the international. So that'll give you a little bit more diversification again uh, as, as we go forward. So, so that's your pension fund. I figured when we get the full report, I can go through all the individual managers. But you, you have, you have if, you, if we scroll to the OPEB, but you can quickly see as you're going through, your managers have all done very down? well last year. How far down? Uh, OPEB is about four pages ahead. All I've got is just the performance of your managers here, you can see. Um, and you can see some real good... Actually, if you want to just go back up a bit, maybe I do touch on a couple of things. Um, Sorry, the page above. Just want to bring us at this page here. Just your attention here. So, you know, obviously, Twin was a big lag in 2020. As the, If you remember, the low quality led the way then. If you didn't make money, you put, your stock prices went up. If you made money, your stock prices went down in 2020. Quirky. Well, the opposite it, it started to happen now, and you can see with their, their more recent returns are, are stronger than the broad market. And Ernest has done a great job, up, up nearly 8% above the index again last year for you. So doing a very good job domestically. Global, we've made changes, so you don't see all of the longer term data there, but you will see it in the OPEB because you do have the MFS and Artisan, Artisan funds in there. But again, you've got a, a mix of value, growth, defensive type strategies as well within that. And then on the international side, you can see Schroeder's was nearly 2% uh, ahead last year for you and, and doing well. And GQG <coughs> for the quarter at the bottom of the page, if you just scroll down a little bit, you can see it was slightly negative, but about a, you know, just over 1% ahead of the quarter of the emerging market. So, so your active managers within the ec public equities did very well last year. If you flip over the page, um, if we look at your defensive equity, which we use instead of hedge funds, for the year, which you'll see in OPEB, that was up over 18%, whereas the benchmark was up 13 and a half. So again, another good complement to your fund, good diversifier. And we now split that between two managers, not just parametric, but Newberger too, as your fund grows. On the real estate, you had the big JP Morgan fund, which has struggled a bit this year just because of its retail allocations that it can't divest out of. We now have Clarion and TA, and these have been crushing it for you. You can see nearly 23% return uh, for the year. TA's not been there for the full year yet, but you can see he's just, just crushed it um, for the quarter. You'll see the quarter in one, one month. Ignore the one month for any of the privates. It's really a quarterly number. They just report at the end of each, each quarter. So... Infra's not there yet, except IFM. IFM, you got him right at the beginning of December. They called that 15 million. And right off the bat, you got 509,000 <laughs> income profit right in the first month, which is great. <laughs> we'll take that. And that's why you show that up 3.5%. Um, timber, we don't have that information yet. And the private equity and private credit, we don't. The good thing about this is because we don't see those numbers now yet, what that means is currently with the public equity markets really volatile and crashing, all of your investments in this are not impacted whatsoever because they're not pricing daily. You know, these are your private investments. You're getting them monthly and quarterly kind of prices. So you're not getting that volatility. So that's why your fund is far better set up now for potential struggles going forward in the markets than we were during the financial crisis when all you had was stocks and bonds at that point. Okay, so because of the extra diversification done, you're in better shape going forward with your pension. So, so that's that. Um, OPEB will just do the observations page and similarly with a 457. Uh, it's page 22 at the bottom. I think you have two more pages. In fact, that, this was your sheet this week that you will get sent out, and you can see the market value is only three million lower than the end of the year. And again, that's because of the benefit of the, the private stuff's not gone down. Uh, OPEB, similar story as you know. Um, so you can scratch the minus private allocations because we do have reef in here now, uh, the real estate. So similar, similar story here. 
good return over 5% for the quarter above your policy index. A lot of stuff really worked well for you, including the listed infra I said that was up 7% right off the bat. Um, in emerging markets being the headwind. Um, you have a little more in equity, a little less in private, so the, re the absolute return's a little lower, about 142 but again, quite a bit above your policy for the year. And um, we'll, we'll be looking on the looking ahead. There we'll be adding a little bit of in, uh, international small cap too. And we may kind of coordinate that with when you make the Europe uh, contribution this year. So we're not forced to sell anything. Noting the markets are quite volatile right now. So that's the OPEB. Any questions on that? If not, you can scroll forward maybe four pages. And we'll finish on the 457. There we go. And we'll just finish on this page. Apologies for the, uh, the table at the bottom. I'll get our own guys to, to do our own proprietary table in future. This was snipped out of Great West Empower's uh, report, but it does make it difficult to look at. But um, again, this fund's doing well as well. Obviously, as markets rise, everybody's accounts go up. Uh, you have 29 million currently. Uh, participant engagement is trending positively. Um, you won't be able to see it in the box unless you've got big, thick glasses on like me. But you can see the trends that more people are gradually starting to put money in. It's not a huge jump, um, but, but things are, all, are, are positive quarter to quarter. So I think the education is working. However, you've got to remember the past two years, it's not been a great environment for any, any DC plan to really get in front of folks and get them engaged. Um, from the fund point of view, you know, you don't have many active funds. You're keeping it quite simple, which is good. You know, most of your funds outperform again for the quarter. More importantly now, you do have the Vanguard institutional target date funds in there. You know, so your pricing went from 35 basis points to nine basis points with them. And they've actually come down now to eight basis points, so they're even cheaper at this point, uh, which is great. And um, so that was done in October, and then by the end of this quarter, you'll have a change in your small cap, mid cap growth, where you're gonna, gonna go with just one manager like you've done on the value side. Um, Empower just preparing all the documentation for that that needs to go out. Uh, but that was on discussion with, with Holly, who, who, who does the education for you as well. That was something we thought that would be accretive to the fund, so we, we put that in motion, a new good fund. Uh, for you to have. In fact, you have that fund in your OPEP fund as well. So, so that is it. Um, I know it was a prelim, but we did go fairly deep in at least bigger picture of how the funds are, 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 are working. Um, as you saw, you've had great, great years ahead. We, we expect going forward, you know, it's, it will definitely be a tougher time to navigate. So from an absolute return, we expect things to be more difficult, maybe lower. But I think from a relative point of view, you're going to be in far better shape just because of all the work you've done over the last couple of years, just to kind of get ahead of the game, noting that we will have an environment like this. We've seen it before. We've been around long enough. We, we know markets go like this, and we've been on a tear like that for so long. Um, now, when markets are at the bottom, we'll start talking about getting a little more aggressive again in our investments. But now's not the time to do that. So now's the time to keep the powder dry. Yeah. So one question, how, how often, and I should know this maybe, does the committee actually get together to rebalance? I mean, are we looking at this? Well, the committee month? don't need a rebalance. We look at it every week. You look at it every yeah. week. So okay. we'll rebalance it. Because it just seems like it's volatile right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Remember through uh, the financial. We're CIO now, so they can, they yeah. can do that. Okay. You know, all right. Just yeah, not, so you know. when, um, so like when you had that big sell-off, in first quarter 2020, we were rebalancing sometimes twice a week. Okay. A little bit at a time. Yeah, but that's the beauty of the no, I get notified. You know, they, they contact me first. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, if you wait for another quarterly meeting, it's too late. Right. Yeah. Right. No, I know we went did. Down and went, you're done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's looked at every week, to, okay. to your point. And then we have an in-depth, I think we had like an hour and 15 meeting, out meeting last week, just kind of going through everything in more detail and, you know, drilling down on individual strategies and what, what they'll look at for this year. 
So, okay. Okay. Any questions for Lee? All right. Uh, there were no executive sessions. Nope. Uh, open it up for public comment. Motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. If you're still watching, uh, <laughs> thanks for hanging in there with us. <laughs>